a little while. Daddy had to go get cigarettes, and it was a, a bit of a longer journey than I expected. Hopefully, Mom told you not to stay up. Otherwise, you've been waiting around for, oh, I don't know, about 18 months? It's been about 18 months, about a year and a half. A year, maybe. Hopefully, the audio's decent. I'm using a different headset than I normally would. My favorite and cheap. I could get rid of that right now. Stream's already started. My favorite little cheap headset's dead. Long gone and buried, and I'm using this thing. So hopefully the audio quality's coming through, at least semi-decently. How have you been? Are you all excited for the ice cream social? I know our president loves his ice cream. I love my ice cream, too. I hope you all love it as well. A lot of things have uh, been going on uh, since I've been gone for a while. Apparently, the Internet's lost its mind. The world's gone a little bit crazy, a little bit... Uh, a little bit kooky. Let me check my audio levels here before we really get into it. I'm using this. Okay, it sounds semi-decent. I'll take it. Weather permitting, the stream will be all right. Apparently Minnesota's going to be blanketed with weather, but I am the weatherman, so I, I think I'll be able to handle it. How have you been, chat? Going by awfully fast. Try to pick out a few things here. Nope, my eyesight can't keep up with it. It's going by a little quicker than I expected. Ah, it's been a while. It's been a little longer than a while. Lots of things to talk about. Lots of world events and internet lore to go over, I'm sure. I will try my best to keep up with the majority of it as best I can. Now, some people have wondered about my stance on the coronavirus. I don't know, can I even say that word on YouTube? Are you allowed to? I, <laughs> Susan, please, I'll send you two boxes of fronds to let me talk about this. Uh, but if asked, has your opinion changed, Jim? Have you changed your mind? No, I haven't. Not uh, so fickle as to just change my mind. We're 18 months into this, year two of it. Going into year three. I'm fairly certain if you take a shit somewhere in the Australian outback, a kangaroo cop will hop on by to go through your fecal matter to see what strain you've got. The world's going off and on, lockdowns constantly, people bickering back and forth. We're we approaching 5 million dead. Corona-chan, our girl has outdone Ebola-chan. I'm sticking consistent with my appraisal of the situation. Not a fucking thing has changed, in my opinion. I feel a little bad for people that are fickle enough just to have their opinion forced on them by others. It was unpopular in the beginning. It's still unpopular now. Different group of people, though. But I'm standing by our girl. She's a little bit batty, but goddammit, I love her. <laughs> I have faith in our girl. So, no, my opinion on that has not changed at all. I'm sorry if that disappoints. I'll have to keep consistent with it. I know consistency is a weird thing in this day and age. Everybody changes their opinion awfully quick. There's no problem, of course, with changing your opinion if it's something you actually want to change on. But I'd rather be like a tree rooted in the ground, choosing myself where those roots go, what branches I grow, rather than a leaf in the wind blown by the opinions of others. It's a little bit sad, to be honest with you. But I, I love a girl. I'm sorry, I can't change. I can't, I can't, I can't betray her. She's stolen my heart. It's going to stay there forever. <laughs> you know, if you remember, I called it the forever flu. Well, we'll see how you feel in year three of it. We've got people like, what is it, Larry Brilliant, the epidemiologist that cured smallpox or helped eradicate it, talking in interviews about year four and five of this. Probably should make you perk up a little bit and pay attention. They seem to think it's not going to end anytime soon. That doesn't mean you have to be a fan of any totalitarian measures in place upon you because of it. But to dismiss it outright is a little bit foolish, I think. But nonetheless, the opinion is consistent, for those of you wondering. No, there's been some questions about my health. I'll get that out of the way as quickly as possible, because who wants to hear depressing things? Uh, yes, I did get sick. Uh, yes, I am still sick going through the clonomics program at Mayo to try to figure out what it is. For those of you unfamiliar with what clonomics is, it's fucking research medicine. So that's always fun. Now, I know that uh, some people have called into question if I have cancer or not. I, I heard that Mersh said that. In fact, you might want to be careful, chat. I also heard that Mersh told people if you donate to me ever on any live stream I do, he's going to be very disappointed in you, very upset about it. And if you donate on a stream and it makes them upset, probably really piss them off if you head on by the Teespring store. Buy yourself a nice shirt. I want to hear a screaming. 
I want it to shatter my windows. Make sure to get a hoodie, too, while you're there. Should have done a promo or code merch, but God help me, the man's social media impact is like Chinese food. 20 minutes after he says something, you forgot he exists. I don't want to make fun of him too much. I want to make sure I got the right merch. This is the merch that uh, saying happy birthday to Sticks because he pulled something out of his ass and was embarrassed publicly. Is that the merch we're talking about? Or is it the merch that ran away from Baked Alaska when he got confronted in the street? Oh, don't, don't, don't mind me, Baked. I'm, I'm looking at the ground. I'm actually, I work with the city. That's why I can't look you in the eye. I'm looking for cracks in the sidewalk as I waddle away. I hear Mersh wants to start a weight loss program. More power to him. Always good to get in health. Keep that uh, that physique up. Get in shape and all that. You know, he's, he's well on his way. He's got a one-pack from what I hear. It looks like he's pregnant with a hunchback of Notre Dame. I guess that's what happens when your treat day ends in a Y, isn't it? But God bless him. He's out there protecting the people. With his gun at McDonald's. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to keep you safe when you order a Happy Meal. I'm glad to know that our, our, our brave Mersh is out there saving the world one person at a time. But no, Mersh, I, I wasn't faking the cancer. Um, and I don't mind if people buy hats or donate. I'm sorry if that enrages you. It's a weird thing to get upset about. But, what, you know, whatever floats your boat, I, I guess if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. And we want you to be happy. Jolly and happy. Jolly and fat. At least that way you can supplement your income when Christmas comes around by LARPing a Santa Claus, huh? <sighs> Mersh, why did you buy a BMW? Why did you buy a ghetto BMW that needs repairs? There's more parts falling off that thing than fucking limbs off a leper. I'm not sure what lemon uh, you guys... <laughs> like, what dealership you walked into that sold you the lemon, but... Maybe just buy, like, a scooter. And then you don't have to spend $10,000 replacing a fucking 30-year-old BMW's parts. I don't know. Revenge of the Sis, Marsh. Well, there you go. I give you something to talk about for the next five weeks. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. Oh, God, who are we talking about? Oh, God. I feel like I ate Chinese food. Uh, you know, I keep abreast of things that are going on. I mean, I hear things, and obviously there's shit that's out there, but I don't really... You'll find out it, this is maybe something you've never experienced, but you get sick enough, and you just kind of not care anymore about a majority of things. It really just kind of rolls off you like water off a duck's ass. You just kind of don't give a shit. It's a fantastic feeling in a way. You're kind of willowed and hollowed out, and you could sit there and stare in the abyss, or you can roll with it. Shouldn't let it keep you down. Gotta keep going. You need that Goku get him attitude. <laughs> oh, what a fucking age we're living in. A digital dungeon. A cyber panopticon. You know, there are things I can't even say anymore. None of us can. It started with words. Certain no-no phrases and words that you couldn't say, and so we had to be smart about it and work our way around it with euphemisms and memes and jokes and substitutions to find a way to express what we meant to say because we can't say those no-no words anymore. But it morphed. It went beyond that. It started to change, didn't it? Now it's not just words that you can't say. It's ideas or concepts that you can't even express anymore. We're being hemmed in, hawed in, <laughs> wrangled, if you were. And what do we do about it? It's not much. Social media really has worked hand in hand with the government to sort of corral us and strip us of our ability to even talk about things. Step out of line and you're deplatformed, demonetized, depersoned. No more bank account for you. No more hosting platform for you. No more servers for you. No more DDoS protection for you. I mean, there's only so much you can build with your own hands. It's one thing to say, use a different website. Build your own service, get your own servers, buy the hardware, run the company, build your own bank. But at this point, we're getting to the, uh, the uh, uh, era where we're going to need to run our own country to be able to say what the hell we think. I'm going to have to move to, like, Tonga or something, just to crack a few jokes that might offend people. And it's so bizarre. And you can kind of feel it. It's that intangible thing, isn't it? It's almost ethereal. It tickles the back of your spine, that, that little bit of despair, doesn't it? as you can kind of slowly see the world going crazy around you as people give in to this. What else can they do? 
pushed more and more from being able to really express what you think and using that silence that you're left with as a example of consensus. But it really isn't. You just don't want to deal with the shit. Can't say what you want to say anymore. Can't do what you want to do anymore. It's not the era we live in. And this isn't some shit like cancel culture. This is this is deep. This goes to the the root of it. Right in the very soul of it. It's fucking tragic. You know, for years, decades, people have talked about this. I've talked about it. About what was kind of coming. And look where we are. Systems of control implemented almost at every level. Blatantly so. Openly so. Yet people like Applebaum, who five, six, seven years ago was talking about how you can't trust hardware companies. Beware the intels, he said. They're putting in backdoors in the hardware for the government. And then the software companies, all working in tandem under the Patriot Act with the government to basically give access behind the scenes to social media companies, which are either coerced or willingly do it. Not all of them, I'm sure, are happy with the decision they've made. You can look at Jack's timeline on Twitter, and you'll see that he's tweeting some very interesting things. But the sad part is, Jack, once you willingly become a cog in the machine, you can't bitch about the smell of oil. It may offend your nostrils, but you willingly got in place. Now you've got companies like Apple talking about things that sound great at the surface, don't they? We're going to come up with a, an algorithm, a program for your phone to look for child pornography. We're going to make sure if you have it on your phone, we're going to match it to a database through a simple scan and then report you to the police. And who would ever object to that? Nobody likes pedophiles or child predators. It sounds like a great idea. Until you ask yourself, could the government do that? Could the police do that? Wouldn't they need a warrant to do that? But Apple seemingly can just do it because they decide to. And sure, something like that starts with something everything you know everyone can agree on. We all think it's bad, we all agree it's bad, and something should be done. But does it stop there? When you put a system of control in place, you usually want to make it appeal to people. You want to sell it to them as something that they can agree with, something they would never disagree with. Who could argue against it? But what if it changes? What if they say they want to start looking for other things? Maybe, from, you know, conversations you're having. You know, I heard that it was broached as a possible uh, way of dealing with the pandemic to have uh, phone carriers allow SMS messages from the government to dispel misinformation. But you need to ask yourself, one, how would they know what disinformation is being spoken of in text messages through SMS unless they're monitoring them? And why would they need to monitor everybody's text messages to tell you to go get a Fauci ouchie? It's insidious. It's a slow drip. It's how it's always been. And it gets worse and worse. The unfettered internet that existed, this playground for everyone to express themselves and do stupid shit and be silly and awful and uh, amazing to one another, it's gone. It's dead. It's buried. It is not coming back. One, you know, <sighs> it's a fucking graveyard. And you and I and all of us, we're the ghosts haunting it. Unable to let go. God, that's depressing. I know, I know. Nobody likes a black pill. Nobody wants to hear a black pill. But I think you need to understand a few things about this. This is a movie we're watching play out in, you know, in front of us. And I'm a critic, just like you. We're sitting side by side in the, same, in the same theater. I'm not the producer. I didn't write the script. Neither did you. All I can do is give my critique. Hope maybe that the sequel is a little bit better, but guaranteed we're sitting in that theater watching this unfold and until those credits roll. We can't escape. It sounds hopeless, doesn't it? But it's not necessarily hopeless. There is one key thing, I think, to remember in the situation we all find ourselves in. And this is apolitical in nature, what I'm telling you here. This isn't a uh, lib thing or a conservative thing. This is a people thing. When systems are put into place to control you, when tyrants, uh, in whatever form they may take, whether that's a oligarchy, a, a technocracy, a government, whatever it is, when they're on top of you, wielding their power, that power which is derived through your fear, they want you to be complacent, and maybe you're forced to be complacent. Maybe you can't speak and say the things you want to say or do and do as you please. But the thing to really take away from it, and to remember in that situation, is to fucking laugh at them. 
They can't stand it. When you laugh at them, when you mock and you ridicule them, you're spitting in their face, you're sliding them in a way that they can't recover from. It's a wound deeper than a dagger. Because it takes away that precious thing that allows them to enforce that power, which is their fear, the fear they implant in you to behave. When you laugh at them, it takes that away from them. And they're left looking like assholes. They can't stand it. Why do you think humor was one of the first things that was attacked on the internet? Well, before politics, humor was one of the first things they went after because they understand its importance and its power. And that if you laugh at them, you're much freer than they imagine you to be. So please don't mistake this as a a black pill. It's just certainly my assessment of where we are, where the internet is. You know, I remember back when the internet was young, at least from my perspective. I mean, I'm not uh, the oldest of the old. I believe that (laughs) that honor belongs to Gator. But, you know, in my time, YouTube was so much more different than it is now. Social media was so much more different than it is now. You could really say anything, do anything. That censorship that's been instilled in us, that trained behavior, It's bizarre. I think about the videos that I used to watch on YouTube on a daily basis, and if you tried to re-upload any of them, you'd instantly be banned. I think about the jokes people used to say on social media, and if you said them, you'd be instantly banned. Forced to retreat into into an alternative setting to uh, other websites that try to offer that alternative, but they're so busy trying to stab each other in the back to take... uh, to take the place on top of the the mountain, I guess. They want to be number one amongst the competition. And so they slit each other's throats. But they're fighting over a molehill. That backstabbing nature hurts them all. I wish to see them all succeed. I, I wish they could. Every alternative that pops up, but through one way or another, they just don't seem to be able to get that footing that they need to really, to really launch themselves, to continue themselves, to fund themselves. That in part is due to the apparatus which exists overhead. I mean, it's it's not really a secret anymore that a lot of things that happen happen behind the scenes, and a lot of the calls that are made are made by financial interests. Companies like Visa and MasterCard pressuring <laughs> pressuring everyone, banks pressuring people, and so payment processors have to bend the knee, payment platforms have to bend the knee. And then these alternative sites, how do they fund themselves? And if they do somehow squeak by, someone finds some reason to be upset or angry at them and crushes them into the dirt. And then you're left back here on a YouTube or on a Twitter or on a Facebook with nothing, really. That's a movie we're watching play out. An awful film written by a horrible person. Produced and directed by, I don't know. Ah, allow me to have a cigarette. Nice thing about having cancer is you can't really... I mean, once you got it, right? I mean, fuck, YOLO. Am I right, folks? (laughs) Of all the things, when it comes to cancer, you would have thought, oh, he's going to get lung cancer. He smokes so goddamn much. Clean as a whistle in there. Go figure. God's sense of humor. You got to love it. A little bit of a, a divine laughter, as it were. And so now... What do we got? (sighs) Political situation that's just goofy. I know. I can't really say uh, definitively that Joe Biden has dementia. I have no proof of that. I mean, that would be a spurious and wild accusation to make. But I can say that it seems that he's a bit disheveled, a little out of it, not really on the ball, as it were. I know a lot of people, orange man bad. So they voted for Biden, hoping that he would be some kind of salvation. Of course he wasn't. And now look at us, in a disaster in Afghanistan. Now, I've loved the narrative. I've watched this be crafted, even since the first day of the pullout announcement, that Joe Biden wanted to get us out of Afghanistan. And if you disagree with that, clearly that means that you want to send more soldiers into Afghanistan. I don't think a single person wants to be there. They're not criticizing the fact that people want to leave. They're not criticizing Joe Biden for pulling out. They're criticizing him for how he pulled out. 
the ineptitude, the confusion, the disoriented, uh, mismanaged clusterfuck which he has gifted the world. $85 billion, I think is the number I heard quoted. $85 billion worth of uh, American military machinery just, just left there. Guns and planes and uh, all sorts of shit. Who knows? Who knows exactly what the total tally will be? Just left. Gifted. Gifted to the country. Who knows what they're going to use that for? Now, you'd think with an organized pullout that machinery and uh, tactical uh, shit would have been uh, on the first of the list. Then he goes and he blames the Afghans. He says the Afghani army is cowardly. Look at them. They won't stand and fight. So this is a man criticizing the Afghani army for being afraid to take a bullet. When he runs away from the podium afraid to take a question? This is a man that has a pre-prepared list of questions which he deems acceptable. That's put together by his own administration because he's too afraid to be asked a question he might not have an answer pre-prepared for. So I've been watching this goofy shit unfold. I've been watching, what was it, the, is it Ducey? Was it the Fox News reporter that was in there? Uh, that's constantly on his ass? I'm not sure who exactly asked it, but somebody asked about the dog attacks. Well, that seems like a benign thing, doesn't it? You know, his dogs uh, bit some people in the Secret Service. Except they lied about how many times it happened. So why would anybody care? Why would that be a big deal? Well, this is the administration that said, Orange Man bad, and we love transparency. Knowingly hiding things. It's just ineptness. It's, I don't know how to explain it other than that. So you're left with two choices when you look at Joe Biden and the disaster in Afghanistan and his administration now as it stands, as inflation shoots up. I mean, are you liking $5 a gallon gas? Is that what the country should be? It's either that the man is incapable, he's stupid, he's just a bad leader, or there's something medically wrong with him. They say you shouldn't attribute malice to uh, actions when uh, an aptitude could explain it. Well, you know, calling him stupid seems a bit harsh, so maybe it is medical. What a goofy world we live in. Just an unfettered hell. <laughs> it's a fucking hellscape, I'll be honest with you. I don't have a lot of faith in government. I'm not saying Trump would have done better. But I've heard liberals now for the last nine months say, excuse me, Joe Biden's president. Well, you're right, he is. So he probably should own up to what's happening. Now all of a sudden they want to say, no, this is Trump's fault. I didn't know Joe Biden called up Donald Trump and said, hey, how can I fuck up Afghanistan, orange man? Hey, I heard you had two scoops. I want one of them. Joe loves himself some ice cream, orange man. Yeah, this is on Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a leader. Joe Biden makes the decisions. Joe Biden's administration decided to do this, and Joe Biden's administration fucked it up. You've got people from the Pentagon making statements that are almost instantly shown to be false. The Taliban's not at the airport. The Taliban isn't providing security. False false. People didn't fall from the sky. I watched videos of it. You watch videos of it. Day after day, they say something, proof comes out, and then they have to uh, alter their answers. And where was Joe Biden when this disaster was unfolding? I remember a lot of talk about, you know, Donald Trump being lazy. Oh my God, he golfs so much. How many press conferences did the president give as this unfolded? He stepped in front of the podium for a total talking time of what, an hour? This is a man that if you look on Twitter right now, you'll find video clips of him falling asleep while he sits with the, uh, the Prime Minister of Israel. Sleepy Joe isn't a meme. The man literally fell asleep. I think they had to have you know Kamala Harris poke him with a stick to make sure he was still alive. Sleepy Joe Biden, tired. Joe Biden need ice cream. Oh, I'm doing the Tonka voice. God, I wonder what happened to Tonka. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't care. <laughs> uh, does anybody... <sighs> now you've got everybody around the world laughing at America, which is fair. I mean, if I were a foreigner, I mean, I, as an American, I love to do streams talking shit about the world. So if I was the rest of the world, I would be talking endless shit about America right now. I mean, it's your turn up to bat. You've earned it. This is an embarrassing disaster that seemingly is continuing onwards. And so now we've had a terrorist attack there, ISIS-K. What does the K stand for? Is this, are they reinforced by potassium? Are they the healthier version of ISIS? Is this like a diet brand of terrorism? Who names themselves ISIS K? Is there an M and an L? They pick every letter of the fucking alphabet? <laughs> ISIS K here to infuse you with potassium. Okay. All right, ISIS, calm yourself down. 
Oh. Was it 90, 150 Afghans dead from the suicide attack, 13 service members dead? And then I watch a YouTube video, a YouTube video of somebody in the military asking a simple question, where's the competency and where's the responsibility in the administration? Why is nobody up the chain of command saying anything or doing anything about this? You know what happened to him? Done. Fired. His ass was out the door. At the same time, you can go on TikTok and watch some chick that drives a fucking refuel truck or whatever the hell it is in the military say she can't wait for martial law so she can stick a gun in your face. What's going on with our military? We've got General Mark Milley out there talking about white rage and communism and all these other fucking things. When what he should be doing is putting together an exit strategy that's not a goddamn historical embarrassment. You have Biden had made speeches for months talking about how oh, Afghanistan wasn't going to fall, the military was going to stand, ISIS wasn't a threat, Taliban, or because they didn't exist, Taliban wasn't a threat, everything was going to go smooth, everybody was going to get out, it will not be a repeat of Vietnam, he said. You will not see images of people leaving the embassy like the fall of Saigon. And that is literally what you saw. Quite literally what happened. And now you've got the Taliban on social media eating fucking ice cream cones and driving go-karts, mocking the president of the United States, you know, at a press conference with the Taliban. One of the reporters asked them, what is going to happen to women under your rule? What about free speech and free association and all of that? And his response, with laughter, was essentially, and this isn't verbatim, but it's the gist of it, is, isn't it strange to have a Westerner ask me about freedom when you can't even say what you want on Facebook? Why don't you go talk to Zuckerberg? I don't know who taught these men as they spent 20 years in the fucking mountains how to meme and where they got their banter. I blame Australia. It must be Australians. Somehow they've set up their own their own communication network could have taught the Taliban how to banter. But the guys hiding in the mountains know about the panopticon that we've enconced ourselves in. They understand that we're surrounded by this shit, and they mock us for it. But, you know, at least uh, Mark Milley was able to get the Afghan girls robotics team out, so I guess no harm, no foul. I mean, it's like an omelet. you got to break some eggs, am I right, folks? Wasn't that the big selling point? The adults are back in charge? I, I remember hearing that smugly from a lot of people. Oh, the adults are back in charge. Things are going to go well, everybody. Sure as shit doesn't feel like it. Sure doesn't feel like things are being in control. It doesn't feel like the adults are in the room. It feels like we're all grasping in the darkness because we have no leadership. Fundamentally, on every level, it feels like leadership is imploded in upon itself. Joe Biden feels like a doddering old fool, a, a man that walks into walls unless you give him some guidance by taking him by the fucking elbow and directing him where he needs to go. Kamala Harris is ducking the cameras, which is probably the smartest political thing she's ever done. Because God help her, if she ever gets in front of one, they're going to ask about the southern border and that speech she gave two months ago saying she was uh, vital in the planning of the uh, Afghan pullout. Pelosi's out there. I don't know what Pelosi's doing. She's kissing Biden's ass. That's political poison, and it'll do her harm. And I've got the Democrats worried about the twenty uh, or the midterm elections, twenty twenty two, worried that they're going to lose power, so they can't push through all the ridiculous shit that they do now, using those reconciliation bills to up the amount of money we print. I mean, God, at this point, it's like candy, isn't it? We're just giving it out to everybody. I mean, first it was the $1.5 trillion, then another $1 trillion, then another $1.5 trillion. Now it's a $3.5 trillion. The, the numbers are starting to become meaningless as the bigger they get. It becomes ridiculous. so abstract you can't put your head around it. But you've got to let it through. Talking about job creation and things are going great and all of that. And yet, what do we have? We have a situation where people have been stuck indoors because of a pandemic. You've got landlords that run properties, and I know, God, I know, everybody hates landlords. They're the devil. I get it. But they still have to pay their own fucking bills. It's not like the houses and apartments were gifted to them. How many of those fuckers are underwater, I couldn't say. But then here comes the CDC to extend the eviction moratorium illegally. I mean, it was bizarre. It was a weird power grab, but they did it nonetheless. And so what happens when that kind of decision is made? From both perspectives, those who agree with eviction moratoriums and those who don't, here's what happens. 
Joe Biden can't get his own political party to do more eviction moratorium. So here comes the CDC to do it. Now, everybody knows the CDC can't do it. But Biden tells everybody, don't worry. You don't have to worry about paying rent till November. You're safe. Everybody's good. Nothing to worry about. Landlords get fucked. And then judges come in and say, you can't do that. There can't be an eviction moratorium. It ends now. Okay, so now you're going into September. So now the landlords are looking better, but everybody that believed that these eviction moratoriums were in place and they had another month or two to prepare to figure out what the fuck they were going to do, your ass is out the door. Because it's been 18 months that these people have been waiting, right? What a crazy thing. What a cowardly thing. That's the sort of decision, right, from an administration that fucks everybody over. Fucks the landlord over, fucks the tenant over, creates confusion and chaos. And you're seeing that play out over and over again. That confusion and chaos, the inability to lead from an administration that doesn't know what it's doing, that makes decisions that affect everyone and hurt everyone. A southern border that's wide open like a sieve. Here's a question for everybody in regards to the coronavirus. Again, Susan, please, just let me say this. If you're saying that the pandemic is fueled by variants, and if you tell me that those variants are because of unvaccinated people, have you looked at the worldwide vaccination rates? Currently, worldwide, it's about 30% vaccinated. That's after 10 months of effort. 10 fucking months to get that amount of people vaccinated. And you need about triple that. You're going to need about 90% for that uh, sought-after herd immunity they talk about, which means another 20 months. Let's say they speed it up, right? Okay, they speed it up. Let's say it's a year and a half rather than 20 months. Well, that's a variant fucking factory that's worldwide. So if you're really concerned about that, you'd think border security would be something you'd be worried about. But it isn't. Kamala never went down to take care of it. So we just let people in. Just fucking let them in. Let them in. Let them in. We'll deal with it later. It's a chaotic situation. Biden comes in and he says, we need to go green. We need to go solar. We're going to shut down pipeline jobs. We're going to do this the right way. And now here he is on his knees begging OPEC to produce more oil to drive down price. And OPEC doesn't give a shit and laugh at him. And why wouldn't you laugh at him? Because it was a stupid, silly thing to do. Now your gas prices go up. These chaotic fucking decisions that don't make sense, that there's no pre-planning, they sound good. They sound good in a speech. But if you don't have planning behind them, an infrastructure behind them, and a will to drive them, they just do damage. So with those kind of decisions, it's really not weird to see Afghanistan sitting in the situation it is, is it? There was no planning involved in it. He just wanted to be able to have a 9-11 anniversary and say we're out of Afghanistan. That's what he gave a shit about. He didn't give a shit about personnel, didn't give a shit about equipment, didn't give a shit about security. He cared about the photo op. And so when it blew up in his face, he hid. He hid away. He hid away in a way that liberals used to make fun of Donald Trump for hiding away. Taking trips to Camp David, taking trips to Delaware. And then he'd show up to the White House, he'd give a 10-minute speech where he'd get everything wrong and be contradicted within a day, and then he'd he'd tuttle off, he'd trudge along, and he'd leave. And then another big fuck-up would happen, and he'd be right back saying, I didn't know people were falling from the sky. I need to go eat more ice cream. I mean, if we're this incompetent running away, I I am scared to think what we're going to do if we actually have to fight a fucking war with anybody that's semi-fucking coherent and capable. I mean, we're up shit creek if that happens. At this point, Cuba could take us over. The Tonganese could come with canoes <laughs> and their one airplane from their mighty air force and take us over. It's such a strange world, man. Feels like a fever dream, doesn't it? <laughs> Feels like we're stuck in a fever dream. But again... I don't mean to uh, to blackpill you too much. That's just my observation, watching that movie, sitting inside that theater with you. That's my assessment. Global politics is fucked. American politics is fucked. And we're all being muzzled, so we can't really talk about it. What the hell, man? You know, I just wanted, I just wanted my circus. My bread and circus. They won't even let me have that. It's too offensive. <laughs> even the Romans... 
understood that you can't be that fucking stupid. I see a lot of ice cream cones. A lot of ice cream cones in chat. I'm glad you're loving the vanilla. Don't we all love the vanilla? Somebody said Tonka mad. Oh my god, is he actually still out there somewhere? I, I'm trying to catch up. Chat's going by so fast, but Tonka's Tonka still out there? I wonder what he's doing now. I thought he was wrestling. Wasn't him and Jim Sterling wrestling each other? <laughs> Isn't that what he does now? <sighs> oh, I saw somebody bring up QAnon in the chat. Yeah, let's talk about Q for a second. Again, Susan, please. I'll watch my language, I promise. I'll be a good boy. Boy, wasn't that funny. You know, for uh, about a year, two years, three years, I, I'd taken the viewpoint that Q was like cicada for boomers, right? That it was like some kind of internet, uh, <laughs> internet game that they got way too invested in. But they trusted the plan so much, they forgot to vote. Oh, that's got to sting a little bit. Oh, they were so dedicated. Oh, they were such true fucking believers. Left holding the bag on that shit. That's got to fucking sting. You know, I remember at the height, there were fucking, uh, there must have been thousands of stores selling Q merchandise. There were Q streams. There were people that treated that shit like they were looking at a lost language, doing a study on that. You'd get 50 and 60 year olds from fucking Facebook having five hour long live streams talking about Q drops <laughs> and all the deep significance in them. Oh man, I don't know what that was. I mean, you could say that that was... You could say a lot of things about it, but really, you should appreciate the humor of it, I suppose. <laughs> that, was, that was the biggest clusterfuck I've seen in years. I mean, at least Cicada ended with people trying to solve tough puzzles. I don't know what you got left with from Q. Aside from merchandise, you're too embarrassed to wear in public at this point. Oh. A psyop? Maybe you're right, chat. Maybe it was a psyop. I don't know. What's that? There was, there was a previous thing kind of like that. What was it? The uh, uh, trust plan or plan trust? Some Russian thing where they convinced the peasants to just everything was okay in the palace. Trust this, guys. <laughs> Two more weeks and it'll be back to normal. Oh. I'm kind of, I mean, you'd expect. I, I guess it's kind of 50-50, right? You'd expect if it was a psyop, whoever did it would come out and be like, I, I owned your asses. Look at how amazing that is. On the other hand, if it wasn't a PSYOP and it was somebody LARPing, they'll never publicly admit it. It'd be too fucking embarrassing. Too many people would be mad at them. So we're going to have to wait a decade. I did see that documentary on HBO about it. I mean, that was entertaining. You know, what they pause it at the end that, um, oh, I can't remember his fucking name. Uh, the guy from 8chan, Code Monkey. They, they pause it that that was Q. You know, I can't say whether or not that's the truth, but I'll tell you, uh, the, the the documentary guy, a uh, little more balls than I have. Because if some dude told me to meet him in the middle of the forest at like one in the morning so he could sing opera, I would take that as him telling me he's going to skin me and wear it as a suit. <laughs> it's like episode three. He's like, hey, hey, man, I know you're looking about you're looking into that Q thing, but um, why don't you come into this forest with me at midnight? Uh, uh, why, why do you want me to go in the forest with you? Just trust me. I want you to hear my opera. I sing really good opera. Come into this forest with me at midnight. Don't tell anybody. Come on. I want to sing some opera for you. <laughs> I hope he brought a gun. I'd be like, uh, you know, oh, shit. I'd love to hear your opera in the forest at midnight in a country I'm not familiar with, but I think I'm going to pass on that, my friend. Oh, you know, I've missed streaming. I'll be honest with you. It's fun just to shoot the shit and really just talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. But you, uh, you're kind of sapped of energy. You don't really have the motivation to do it. You're kind of caught up in your own head with the shit you're dealing with. Uh, but it is entertaining once in a while. Oh my god. All the internet shit. All the internet drama that I've missed. Well, not missed. I mean, I've, I've kind of passively watched it happen. I think the biggest of which, the most interested I am when it comes to the shit that's going on currently has to be Chris Chan. 
It has to be. Oh, oh, how could you not be fucking enraptured by this story? It's going to be the OJ of the internet. I hope to God it goes to trial. It will be the fucking OJ of the internet. It will make the Zimmerman trial look like a warm-up act. Chris Chan. I mean, is it... the de- We're at the death of the internet, right? This is like the final days. What better capstone than the trial of Chris Chan? I mean, sim- the symbolism of it, right? Uh, just, it's perfect. You couldn't write it better. Here's this guy that's been watched by the internet for a decade. A decade! All the crazy shit that, you know, Chris has done. And here we are at the finale. The dude goes out and allegedly, right? Allegedly, I've got to say allegedly, uh, raped his mother. <laughs> uh, that's, that's terrible. Who could have ever foreseen this happening? And now he's going to go to big, he, well, he is in big boy prison. He has a court date where he appears, and his biggest complaint is, I want you to let me out for a while so I can get my toys. <laughs> he's probably bouncing off the walls right now. Sorry, Chris. Hate to tell you this, but Legos and Sonic and Transformer toys aren't allowed <laughs> in fucking solitary confinement. He's probably drawing the newest edition of Sonic U on his prison walls in shit and shit urine. Begging for the dimensional merge to happen so he can go be a CPU goddess and not stuck in a jail cell. Now, will he take a plea deal? Will he cop out to try to get less time? I don't know. Will they find him guilty? I don't know. But you know what the most horrifying thing that could happen might be? And, and you know, given how much of a clown world this is, this is what I'm expecting is going to happen. Oh, fingers crossed. Christian will be tried for this. There will be physical evidence that this happened to Barbara Chandler, right? That this crime actually took place. But Barbara Chandler will take the stand in defense of Chris. And she will tell the court that she loves fucking her son. And then we're going to get two hours of graphic description of the frequency of his tongue when he's flicking the bean. Imagine the absolute horror on the jurors' faces as they they hear this. As Barbara Chandler describes to the court in graphic detail how she loves getting fucked by her son. That would be the perfect capstone to Clown World. That would be the thing, I think, that would really make, just really upend everyone's expectations. That's like a Shyamalan twist. (laughs) Nobody saw it coming. Barbara, why would you ever, why would you testify for here this, for this sick pervert? Because I love the way he fucks me. Oh, no! Barbara, please, no! Oh, but that trial's coming up. Do you know that we're probably going to hear Chris Chan... I mean, if this goes to trial, there's 10 years of things that have happened that the court's going to have to hear about. Because his defense, I'm almost certain, are going to try to say that this is a, a mentally vulnerable man who has been shaped and misled to commit a crime. That it was almost under duress, shaped by years of trolling and torture. And to set up that kind of defense, this guy's going to need to include everything that's ever happened. There are going to be jurors that are going to be sitting there listening to a man in a pickle suit. Liquid Chris is going to be put up on a widescreen display playing his guitar. We're going to hear the audio clips of Blue Spike laughing as Chris shoves a Sanachu medallion up his asshole. It's going to be fucking wild. Some people have said it's kind of like that Seinfeld finale, right? Where every character comes back. It's almost like that. Except these aren't people that are probably going to be familiar with Chris Chan. They're going to sit there in abject horror listening to the shit recited to them, detail by excruciating detail. They're going to watch him drink his semen from Fanta. They're going to watch him fuck blow-up dolls. So many blow-up dolls. They're going to see pictures of his taint being ripped open and him thinking that he's growing a vagina. Uh, It's going to be the wildest shit ever. And they're going to be sitting in that jury booth wishing that they had gotten some other case because it's going to last for months. God, I hope it's streamed. I I can't even imagine the amount of people who would watch this. It'd be the greatest trial ever. You you have to stream it. You have to let the public see it. I mean, what are the realistic possibilities? Well, realistically, uh, Chris will... I, I, I mean... People say, well, it'd be an insanity defense, right? Chris is obviously insane. It's an insanity defense, so he'll walk. Do you know how hard it is to prove that? 
I mean, it's really difficult to go with insanity to get out of trouble. I mean, his best bet is trying to get a, a plea deal for minimal time or no time and some kind of stringent probation. But his life is radically altered because even if he finds a way to slip the noose on this and he gets out of trouble, they will never let him go live with her again. I mean, that's her house, right? So he's never going back to that house again, which means you've got a whole new arc. You've got two arc possibilities sitting before you, pre-dimensional merge. Christian is either going to prison or Christian is going to be homeless. <laughs> that's, those are your two arcs. Now, I, I've seen this, uh, uh, I, I, the chick's name, uh, Isabel Janky, the jankster. Uh, everybody's saying that this is a Machiavellian mastermind uh, that's set into motion all of these plans. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the entertaining part for me is the trial. I'm in it to watch what happens with Chris Chan. Now, will the lawyer bring up this chick and try to swerve it in her direction? Oh, fuck yes. Probably, if they go to trial, he's going to swerve it in everybody's direction. God, imagine if they call to the stand everybody that's ever trolled Chris Chan. Imagine everybody that's ever done something to him coming to court to take the stand. And I, please, Pickle Man, <laughs> if that happens and you're summoned to go to this fucking trial, show up in a pickle suit. Give it your all. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to give it your all, man. It's a fucking historical event. You need to show up in that fucking pickle suit. And Liquid Chris <laughs> needs to show up dressed like Christian. Oh my God. I'd love if he took the stand and say, that man is innocent. I'm the real Christian. <laughs> that man is an imposter. I'll have you know my mother was never in love with me. We've never had sex. I guarantee it. Uh, it's been hell. It's been hell waiting for more news about this. I mean, we're what? We're, I'd say, three weeks away from more information. I think it's sometime like early, middle September that he's got another hearing. I mean, generally with court cases like this, they're hearing, 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 delay, 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 until you finally get to the meat and potatoes, the juice of it. And so we're waiting to get to the juice of it. But it's coming. Oh, Lordy, is it coming. I'm actually really looking forward to I really hope it goes to court. I really hope there's a trial. I don't know, chat. Uh, let me let me see what the, uh, the general uh, consensus is with you. Uh, give me a one if you want to see Christian go on trial. Give me a two if you if you don't think it's going to happen. One, Chris goes to court. Two, he weasels out of it. Let's see if we can try to get a consensus built. I know there's a bit of a delay. There always is a fucking delay with streaming. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of fucking ones. A couple of twos. Mostly ones. See, you want it too. I mean, why not? We're stuck in a position where we can't really enjoy the entertainment we want anymore. Internet's so censored and sanitized, you can't really have fun anymore. I mean, this is kind of like the last hurrah, isn't it? The trial of Chris Chan decides the fate of the internet. Oh, it's fucking poetic. It's like divinity came down from the heavens and said, fuck yeah, I'm going to write it like this. <laughs> I'm going to write it. Perfect capstone. That's a season finale, a series finale. The last hurrah of the internet, the trial of Christian. Oh, and you're going to have streamers everywhere talking about it. It's wall to wall fucking coverage. I'm really excited. God, I hope this doesn't get fucked up. <laughs> I hope the DA pushes, pushes the trial through. <sighs> fucking Christian, man. You know, I figured it would end darkly for him. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a prophet, though. I didn't, didn't think he'd go and rape his mother. So I'm not calling dibs on, on uh, uh, you know, figuring that out ahead of time. Uh, but I figured it would be a dark ending. I thought he'd get wrapped up in something. He'd get too pushy with somebody. And he'd either get hurt in public or he'd do something stupid that would hurt himself. But I figured it would be dark and he'd end up at some point homeless. Like Barb would die and he'd burn through the money and lose the house and, I don't know, build a fucking Lego shack to live in. I, I, I wasn't exactly sure where it was going to go, but I was pretty sure it was going to be dark. But really exceeded my expectations, Chris. <laughs> oh, God, just, it's gross. 
It's gross even thinking about it, really. But that's what makes the best kind of trials, right? Betrayal, uh, vengeance, sex. It's got pieces of all of that built into it. You've got a uh, just a, 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 a an assortment of people, <laughs> assortment of characters who could take the stand and have to talk about this and explain it. <sighs> the perfect ending. Uh, yay, you're not dead. Yes, uh, yes, chat. No, I'm not dead. Uh, this is actually just a really well done deep fake. <laughs> Jade figured out how to deep fake my voice, and you're all being taken on a ruse cruise. Uh, Jim died a long time ago, a month into his sickness, and it's just been working on the technology to, to, <laughs> to fool you. We need some Blue's Clues mystery solvers here to help us figure out what's really going on. Yes, DSP is still out there, somehow chugging. The last stars in the fucking galaxy could die, and DSP would still be out there doing his thing. I don't know how exactly that, what form that might take, but he'll still be honking and snorting his way. <laughs> as fucking heat death in the universe happens, protected and insulated from it, uh, fucking surviving forever. Oh. If you remember much about my streams, you remember that I always take a little break. So let's take a small, momentary break while I go get something to drink. And I will put on some, some background music for you so it's not just dead air. I'll try not to dong this up. So if you got to grab something to eat or drink or take a piss or shit, do whatever you got to do. Now's your time to do it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll meet back up. We'll continue on discussing all the uh, crazy shit that's gone on in the last year and a half uh, and just a few all righty uh, we're back hopefully you enjoyed your little break get back to the discussion uh, I, I know previous streams that I did were a little more a little more pre-planned but I wasn't really actually planning on doing this but I figured what the fuck it's been a while so I might as well do a stream see if I still have it in me uh, what do you know I do <laughs> Since it really just comes down to sitting on your ass and talking about shit, I think I can handle it for a night. I'll let the darkness grow. I don't know what actually um, our boy has been up to. <sighs> Mr. Photon himself. I know he was doing live streaming for a while, but I think his channel ran into some kind of an issue. Uh, he was doing it uh, on, was it DLive and YouTube? I haven't really kept up with it. Hopefully he's out there and he's doing well and his streams are doing well and people are enjoying that. I always find him to be an entertaining guy uh, with some wild opinions, but that's what makes him entertaining. Need a little bit of a, a little bit of craziness in there to really, to really keep somebody's attention. And he, he delivered. <sighs> Photon was some good shit. Man, you know, I miss streaming on places like uh, was it Stream Me. Or you could really kind of just... That was one of the last places you could really do what you wanted to do. It's kind of dead in the water. Uh, DLive, I heard, purged a lot of people. Not exactly sure what the situation with, is over there, I guess. Um, I kind of cut cut and run uh, when I ran into issues with them during one of my streams. And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to bail now. I think there's... What is there? BitChute? I don't know if they've in implemented streaming. I don't even know if they stream yet. Uh, Odyssey, which is... Uh, what is that, Dispatches thing? Uh, I think they're doing okay for now, but not 100% certain. <sighs> but you need those alternatives, man. Have a place to go to say what you want to say. Make those raunchy jokes and laugh at the shit that uh, you really, truly want to laugh at. That you're kind of confined <laughs> from even addressing on certain sites. I mean, you could go to Twitch and get banned instantly for even farting the wrong way. Can somebody explain to me the whole mentality of Twitch TV? I don't really understand this. So am I to understand that you can't make jokes that are risque? You can't say things people dislike. You can't express opinions that aren't groupthink. You know, there's all these fucking standards in place for how you stream a video game over on Twitch TV. And yet, at the same time, a chick can put a bikini on and basically just take a bath live on stream. 
shake her wet ass at the camera. That's totally fine. You make a bad joke, yeah, you gotta go. Now maybe Twitch, maybe Twitch had like an inside track. Maybe they knew that uh, OnlyFans was gonna pull the plug on all the sex content, so they're like, we need to get ahead of this and let chicks start taking baths live on Twitch TV. Uh, so all the horny people know where to go. Got to get them over here. Got to get that horny money. There's no greater revenue source in the world than horny money. The porn industry will tell you that. Do they, do they even play video games on Twitch anymore? I mean, my, my uh, you know, impression of what Twitch TV is at this point is chicks taking baths and a group of 38 people on one call talking about politics for five hours. Is that sum up Twitch TV at this point? I mean, is that is that fairly accurate? Political calls that last five hours with 48 fucking people on screen and half women naked in a bathtub? Are there are there video games over there anymore? Does, do people play video games on Twitch? Is that even allowed? Maybe they changed their terms of service to ban you for playing video games. As the ultimate fuck you to everyone. You're no longer allowed to play video games on Twitch. Oh, is that what they've implemented? Coom coins? Is that what they're calling the Twitch TV? Uh, they went from bits or whatever they were, and now they're coom coins? How many coom coins per hour do girls earn on Twitch TV? <sighs> Maybe I can get like an Instagram filter and put it over myself and just start splashing around. Oh, welcome everybody. Now, see, I can't get that pitch right. I'll just confuse people. Why? <laughs> Why does this woman sound like a man? And look like a cartoon, but I'm so horny, I've got to give him money. Oh, God, is that, oh, oh shit. Get my wallet, honey. <laughs> this disfigured monster of a cartoon character that's a wooing at me is, they're in a bathtub, I need to donate. <laughs> what video game they're playing? I don't, I, there's something in the background. So I, fuck, what are video games? Just give me the goddamn wallet. Boy, that OnlyFans thing really pissed people off, didn't it? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I know everybody talks about, oh, God, the degeneracy. But if I was a chick and you told me that I could open an OnlyFans account and show off, like, stupid outfits or take feet pics and become a millionaire, oh, I would sell out for that shit. Listen, principles are great, but a paycheck is better. <laughs> These chicks went from working at Wendy's as a waitress to owning mansions. So I can understand why they're fucking pissed that OnlyFans is trying to change things up. Because that gravy train is gone. I don't, they're going to have to go to Twitch. It'll be best bathtub streams for you for now on. Oh. Femboy Jim. That's what I'll call my, my Twitch TV channel. All bathtubs all the time. 24-hour bathtubs. Be sure to purchase your coom coins and donate uh, vigorously. <sighs> How's the uh, deepfake working, chat? Is it convincing? <laughs> it's it's Jade here. I'm using the voice changer. After we cremated him, we took the audio uh, he left behind to really, really create an amazing algorithm. Just can't get the awooing down. That's the only thing. The awooing doesn't really hit the right pitch, so we try not to hit that button too much. Oh, I saw Christ is King. You know, that you've jogged my memory now about Nick Fuentes. Now, what happened to Nick Fuentes? I heard they froze his bank account. He can't get on an airplane anymore. And he's been banned off of fucking everything. And I, I, this is what I don't understand, right? So you've got all that pressure kind of coming down on your head. Why did he ever agree to do a documentary with uh, Louis Thoreau? I mean, he has to know that that's going to just be a, a fucking hatchet job, right? It could be worse. My understanding is Baked Alaska, is he charged still, or did they drop the charges for the January 6th thing? I mean, he acts like he's not charged, right? He's still going around with his content spray, blasting people in the eyes <laughs> and fucking IHOP and 7-Elevens. So he must be feeling pretty okay. I'm trying to watch chat catch up to tell me what the, the newest news on that is. I'm not 100% certain. I just know Nick got really fucked. I, I think it was that Bitcoin donation thing more than anything that pissed them off. 
Didn't he make like half a million dollars in bitcoins from some French dude? And so like that, I, that, that has to be like what made them turn their attention and be like, we're going after this guy. That's just too much money. We're going to, we're going to get him. Uh, anything about baked? Uh, is he still, tr is he still going to trial? Is baked? Anybody in chat? Oh, it's going by so fast. I, I can't. G uh, give me an update on Yoba. <sighs> I'm just going to, I'll have to assume, I'll have to assume he's still going to go to trial for this. So these, going to be a lot of show trials, I have a feeling, for the January 6th thing. Uh, somebody with a super chat, for all the recent Tonka Saw news, hit up Adonis Paul. There, There's recent Tonka Saw news? I really thought he just fell off the face of the earth. I was going to become a flat earther because I thought he literally sailed off the edge of it. I, I haven't heard a peep or a whisper. <laughs> and I know if he's out there lurking somewhere because I just have to listen to a guy talking about Godzilla for eight hours. But apparently, apparently that's not the case. A lot of people saying uh, Baked is a fed. Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to turn evidence or not. I'm not sure if he's going to, I don't know how it's going to play out. Baked is like I, I don't know how to describe baked. He's he's like the DSP of politics. He kind of just slithers his way through. <laughs> Maybe he'll get out of this. I don't know. I mean, my honest assessment is I don't think Baked Alaska is a fucking terrorist. I think he's an idiot. Uh, so the fact that he'd be getting tried for for anything related to January six is a little silly to me. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. But that'll probably be a trial coming up too. Fuck, it's going to be a packed docket, isn't it? You're going to have the Chris Chan trial and then all the January 6th shit. It's going to be a busy fucking couple of months. Lots of entertainment. You know, there needs to be like an internet version of Court TV. You need to get somebody that can be like a host for that. They can just follow shit like this. Just internet related court stuff. That, that live casts from the trial. And just, you could make a whole network out of that at this point. I mean, fuck, even outside of the January 6th thing with all the streamers and the fucking Chris Chan thing, it seems like every other day there's some fucking Minecraft YouTuber that's getting arrested for trying to bang kids. <laughs> what was the most recent one? Uh, who is the, uh, the, the, it's a big fat black dude uh, that's like letters and numbers mixed together. He got caught by like a group that was pretending to be like a 12 year old girl or something. And it's the most awkward fucking encounter you've ever seen. He, like, tries to fist bump them after he gets caught trying to bang kids. You know who I'm talking about? I can't remember the fucking name of it. I, I see people bringing up Riketa. I I'm not talking about somebody to go over court documents. I'm talking about, like, a, pre uh, a presentation, like a television show, where you're literally watching what's happening in court at and giving live commentary, and then interviewing people on the scene. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. There's so many of these big cases coming up. It would be amazing to be able to just sit on my ass and watch that. Oh, here we go. EDP. That was the guy's name. <laughs> EDP. Oh, oh, those text messages were a fucking charm, weren't they? It's this dude talking to what he thinks is a teenage girl, and he's just he's just talking. To, he kept talking about how much he took. Like every part of the conversation, if you notice this in the chat logs, if I'm not misremembering this, his attempt to woo a teenage girl, he'd bring up how many times he took a shit. <laughs> hey, baby, I, I just want you to know I just took the world's biggest dump. If that gets you, that gets you horny? <laughs> Are you horny that I'm taking shits over here, lady? Real, a real ladies man, that one. A real smooth operator. <laughs> With some fucking amazing techniques. Ah, uh, Boogie. Yeah, Boogie's going to trial too. Fucking shit. Is he? Yeah, he's going to trial too, isn't he? Is he in jail or is he going to trial? Was that Chris Chan, Baked Alaska, Boogie? Uh, I don't know if EDP went to trial or not yet, but that's another one. I mean, that's like that's like a solid programming block. Uh, EDP e equals Ross? I, I don't know if it's that bad. Um, <laughs> somebody told me Ross was back. I don't know what he's back from. I thought he'd actually been legitimately uh, committed. So if he's gotten out of the loony bin, uh, amazing. 
He must have solid snaked his way out of that fucking place, but I'm not 100% sure how he did it. <laughs> Back to looking up swimsuits uh, for sale at Target for five-year-olds or whatever the fuck he does in his spare time. Uh, people bringing up Ralph saying he's getting charged with something. Now, is that in, re in regards to the revenge porn thing? Is that actually going to go to trial or has that been dropped? If he's going to trial, that's another one. So you've got Chris Chan, you've got EDP, uh, you've got uh, uh, Boogie, you've got uh, uh, Ralph if he goes to trial. This is, it's too much content. It's too much, somebody needs to come up with this fucking thing. Every, everybody's going to jail, is that how 21, 21 ends? <laughs> is every streamer and YouTuber getting sent to the fucking hothouse? Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to my live stream from Leavenworth. Uh, please ignore the bleeding. I got shivved on my way here. I smuggled this microphone with my ass. Uh, so the sound quality might be a little bit shitty. Hey! Uh, but welcome to my, my cell. <laughs> As you can see, it's solitary confinement. Everybody wants to kill me. Everybody's a critic in here. Oh, yeah, shit, Owen Troyer, too, right? He's getting charged with it. Yeah, so I, you've got so many trials coming up. So many trials coming up. Oh, my God. Oh, let's see here. Now, I, I do see that there are some super chats. There, there are quite a few super chats. There's no way in fuck I can read through all of these super chats. Uh, but I will uh, just try to pick and choose some that I'm going to guess get at the gist of everything. Uh, oh, here's one from Spiffy. Hey, Jim, just out of curiosity, do you take Jade to Pound Town before or after the streams? Uh, clearly after. Uh, if you've listened to some previous streams of mine, you learned what happens when I try to do it before. Oh, what is this here? Let's see. Uh, from Eddie Spaghetti. Uh, hope this isn't some elaborate ruse to get us to fund your cancer treatment gym. You should use this money to buy more cigarettes. Godspeed. Well, of course, cigarettes always take the priority. Uh, from Half Eaten Hooker, does AIDS medication taste like chicken? I wouldn't know, but uh, sure, why not? Let's go with that. <laughs> Let's say, sure, why not? Uh, Sar saying, can I get an NNRU in chat, boys? I'd love to elaborate on what that stands for, but we all know I can't on fucking this channel. <laughs> On this platform, not allowed to. Uh, Richard Grubber, uh, Papa Jim is back from the grave. Pretty sure this is a toss violation since you're a streaming corpse. How was your time in hell? Welcome back to life. Ah, uh, well, yeah, I got, uh, uh, hell was fantastic. Uh, uh, quite a, a bit of warm weather down there. Uh, but not a lot of, not a lot to do for a weatherman. You can't really forecast fire every day of the week. It's pretty consistent. No surprises, really. Uh, from 4 Channel, Jim got kicked out of the cancer ward for yelling, I'm going to keem. It wouldn't have been a big deal, except that he did it in a room full of terminal ill children. Oh, yeah, there's probably security footage of that somewhere out there. Uh, Ryan B. Jim, did the bike <laughs> did the bike pump belly inflation therapy cure your cancer? Uh, sadly, no. Sadly, no, it did not. They need to pump harder, apparently. Uh, a lot of welcome backs. Thank you for that, everyone. Uh, Son of Tiamat, many former skeptics are now bread tubers. Is that part of Don Sargon's 20-year plan for saving the West to be so morally bankrupt you alienate your audience into joining the other side? Uh, people are fickle these days, and opinions change quite rapidly, I sure, I'm sure. I'm not sure what really constitutes. you got to understand, I'm, I'm watching the shit that entertains me, especially given the situation, so I'm not really watching fucking bread tubers. Uh, I'm mostly watching anime and reading manga because I'm a fucking weeb. Uh, about the only names in bread tubing that I'm aware of are contrapoints, uh, the horse, the horse uh, Vouch, and uh, H Bomber guy. If others have switched around their uh, positions, I'm not 100% certain on that. Uh, the Orange Ninja Turtle, will you review Ralph's sex tape? Did you watch it? What did you think? I actually commented on Ralph's sex tape. Uh, well, you probably wouldn't have heard it because it was on Twitter. Um, I did see it. Uh, what do you think? I think I've seen enough. <laughs> it's not getting rewatched. 
if this was a if this was like a VHS tape from fucking Blockbuster, I would have gotten a penalty fee for not rewinding it. That's I'll put it like that. Uh, the Orange Ninja Turtle. A PPP has been a good stepdad in your absence, but now Daddy Jim is back. Tell that disease-riddled Asian Jade to step back. She's making you sick. Let her run around in her cage, on her room, uh, in Naruto uh, slippers outside. Uh, I will take that under advisement. Uh, let's see. An in-star rune. Thoughts on DSP on the quest for Super Berries 2. Okay, so I guess I'm behind on DSP lore. From what I understand, this is where I left off. Um, he went through like a bankruptcy. He saved his house by doing that. Uh, dropped a lot of the debt that he had, uh, but then ran into some kind of trouble with his monetization, either on Twitch or somewhere else, and now I think he streams on YouTube. But outside of that, I haven't. all I know is the man survives everything, uh, and I don't even need to really pay attention to know that. That's just become like a standard thing. It's like a force in and of itself, isn't it? Uh, but if he's on a quest, I'm not 100% certain how the quest is going right now. I'll be honest with you. From a white man, shout out to the Prime Boomer at Union and my friend Luger from Warships General, may he find the perfect black girl to sit on his face. <laughs> I'm sure he'll love it. From Rudy Coleman, Jim is the new Spoonie, bring PPP on. <sighs> it's hurtful. Please. I'm the original Spoonie. He stole my shtick. From EMH. I have my glass of red grape wine, MD 2020, and I'm waiting for the return of the Philosopher King. Let's see here. Scroll through some. A lot of these are uh, NNRUs. <laughs> a lot of people asking to be groomed and saying welcome back. Again, that's uh, it's very kind of you all. Oh, there should be a way to, to actually look at this so I can see more of them. Oh, let's see here. Oh, this doesn't really help very much, but it gives me some of the recent ones. Uh, from butt pluggers are 2%, yet 40% of kitty touchers. Lovely YouTube name. Uh, take my money, Jimpo. Missed you like a R-tard. Misses the point. Oh, very nice. Uh, Vanya8, thank you for all the streams and videos you've given us. Your content is great. I've missed you. I hope they're able to, uh, I hope they're able to help your illness. You deserve to live a healthy life. I'm praying for you. I'm sure I've collected enough of my bad karma to probably get what I fucking deserve. So I'm not sure how it'll turn out. Uh, but first, they're going to have to figure out what the fuck it is, which is why I'm going through fucking goddamn research medicine. I look forward to genetics uh, poking and prodding and fucking trying to get a clue. You know, when I found out I had cancer, I thought that was going to be the big deal. Like, okay, you know, it, it's cancer. That's the shit you got to focus on. Uh, I did not expect that to be secondary to all the uh, clusterfuck that's taking place right now health-wise. It's been a, a year's worth of a roller coaster. Uh, from Spindaboy, did you hear about Ralph dating Digibro's ex and going to his house to beat people up? Strange times we live in. <laughs> I saw the video of that. Ralph shows up. He's like, you want to fight? Do I look five foot one to you, bitch? <laughs> I saw that video. Oh, I laughed fucking hard as hell. Yeah, no, I saw that. I saw that one. Uh, expert spectator, become a socialist to own the libs. Uh, let me jump right on that. Uh, Mr. Trigger, thanks, Jade, for filling uh, the medicare-sized void in our lives. Planning on doing more streams? Probably not. I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I don't really have plans on doing a ton of streams, to, to be honest with you. Maybe I'll do a podcast. It's probably uh, easier. Just an audio podcast. Something you can listen to as you're driving to work. You have to actually learn how to do audio engineering so it doesn't sound like shit. Uh, but maybe something like that. From iParadoxic. Probably butchered the fucking name. Uh, well, Jim, you've managed to get me to send my first Super Chat ever. I'm hoping to you buy a cheeseburger with a Super Chat before you reach uh, their $50 each. Uh, a good friend of mine taught me I can get cheeseburgers for free if I go to the garbage can. hey uh, FP Silver. See you in the FEMA camp, big guy. Uh, we're all going to be there. We're all going to be there. From SK, thank you so much for doing this. I hope you get enough no donations to cure internet cancer for good. I don't think it works like that. Sorry. Uh, nobody. Rip Boogie for 1488. He, he died before chewing the first bite of his triple cheeseburger from Five Guys. Rest in peace, big boy Boogie. 1488. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how fucking Boogie's trial is going to go if he goes to trial. I, I'm guessing this is all in relation to the Frank Hassel thing, right? Hassel shows up, fucks with him on his doorstep, um, and then Boogie comes out with a gun he doesn't own and shoots over his head. And it's a lot better ways to handle that. I mean, shit, Boogie, you could have not answered the door. 
I'm not excusing Frank uh, fucking with you. Uh, don't get me wrong, but like you could not open the door, right? That's a a, a valid fucking possibility. Or you could have just called the cops if you're really worried. But like you put yourself in a pretty bad position saying you feared for your life and needed to pull a gun on somebody when you knowingly opened the door yourself and didn't wait for law enforcement and then started firing rounds off. So I don't know how well that's going to work out for him. Uh, but I'm sure somebody will keep us updated. Uh, from Medicare Fembot, people found out Donga had four kids he abandoned and worked at Burger King <laughs> till four came behind and got arrested. Also, he's white and not Native American. Get the fuck out of here. So are you saying that he's arrested right now? Is Donga in prison? So he he had four kids he didn't pay any child support for and was working at Burger King until he got so far behind they arrested him for deficient payments. And he's not even Native American? He was LARPing that too? No way. Oh, that's funny as shit. Uh, Captain Autismo, thanks, Jim. YouTube has not been the same without you. Your old videos have been entertaining my long shifts as I drive in the darkness. Get better, man, and stay safe. Well, thank you. Uh, from Crusader Sarkin. Hunter Biden stores coke and launders millions because his dad is president. Corporal Hunter Lopez and 12 others are dead for the same reason. Yeah, didn't Hunter Biden have another laptop that he lost? I know there was the initial report of the first laptop, which they disputed and said wasn't true. And then more video evidence came out at a later date where he said something akin to, I've lost another laptop. Can can somebody buy Hunter Biden a goddamn PC? Because he can't bring that with him. Hunter, if you're listening to this and you want to fuck hookers and do cocaine and take pictures of it, get a goddamn desktop. That way, all the shit doesn't get stolen by people. And I don't have to see videos of your cock all over the internet, Hunter. Buy a fucking desktop. God, you can order them on the internet. You don't even have to go to the store. Use some of that art money you've got and buy a fucking desktop. Uh, S. Cybertaz. Donga has four sons. He hasn't paid child... Oh, more people are saying the same thing. Savoy6, welcome back. Haven't seen you in forever. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff about Tonka now. I, I had no idea that, like, this was a thing. I thought he'd just was be, you know, be talking about, like, fucking Godzilla. That was going to be it. It was going to be Godzilla discussions nonstop, nothing else. Now I'm actually, you've interested me now. If he's, if he's in prison or got thrown in, like, county lockup. I don't know if he's in, there are certain states, right, where if you don't pay child support, they take away your driver's license. So I don't know, is he in one of those states? Does he have to walk everywhere now? Isn't that kind of ironic? Doesn't he run like a used car lot? Could you imagine owning a used car lot, but you don't even have a driver's license? Uh, AWOX Bandog, welcome back, Jim. Get something nice. Thank you. Uh, from Ryu, go to locals.com. I don't even know what the fuck that is. You can get one hour live stream starting as your community. Gr oh, is this an advertisement? You can get one hour live stream and you can't get banned if you don't break US laws. You can ban people too. I don't know if you're advertising a website because you're paid to, or if you're actually telling me that that website will let you stream and just say whatever the fuck you want. Uh, from Umpty Madu on BitChute, if you try to search for Hitler, no results. Yeah, you see, I, you know, I know BitChute was in a position where they were stuck between a rock and a hard place. One, they wanted to set up a platform where you could basically say and do what you wanted, but at the same time, they're based in the UK, right? And UK law is just up people's asses. So, isn't this the same thing that happened to LiveLeaks? My understanding with LiveLeaks was it was UK-based, and something happened in May with British law that made it even harder to host the kind of content excuse me you wanted to. Because like if I if I remember it right, didn't it go? It was like Ogreish, and then it became LiveLeaks, and LiveLeaks was there for a while, uh, you know. And it, people had speculated, oh, they're not making enough money off advertisements. But right around the time they pulled the plug, there was some kind of change in UK law that would have made them essentially have to go through the whole website and take down a shit ton of videos. And so they just offloaded it. And now it's like IT feels or something. It's some weird fucking site now, but they don't allow any gore at all. I'm guessing that's the same situation BitChute's in. If that's true in regards to live leaks, I guarantee you it hit BitChute as well. And I bet if you were starting to see things disappear from search results, it probably started around May. That's speculation. I could be wrong. I, I could be completely wrong on that, but that's, that's my guess on what's going on. Uh, from Rice Jones, apparently Chris Chan would go to a woman's prison. If so, Chris Chan dating Sim when? 
maybe everything has worked out for his love quest after all. I mean, there was speculation that this was like some 4D underwater chess shit from Chris. <laughs> to find a boyfriend-free girlfriend. But that's a hell of a setup. I mean, that's somebody that's committed to their op, isn't it? Uh, from Purdy, a princess, world is fucked. Brittany Vente wants to lose her voting rights to American men like Chris Chan. Meanwhile, Chris Chan was almost put in a woman's prison. Uh, lost controller, has Susan paid up yet? Oh, she paid up a long time ago. Everybody doubted me. They all made a bunch of jokes. Oh, why would you do weather reports? What are weather reports going to do? It totally worked. Everybody loves a weatherman. Action Man, do you have any friends on Twitter I should follow? Uh, no, not that I can say. <laughs> Sorry. I'm looking for more Tonka stuff. That actually really got my attention, but now, now nobody's talking about it. I, I, give me a chance, uh, chat. I'm working my way through. Uh, Troy Rupert, I missed you, chat. You're all my best friends. Jim's okay. Uh, from Nintendo Not Get Well Soon King. Question, are you familiar with Stephen L. Miller? Red Steve's? Steez on Twitter. His podcast versus media has been my addiction since the virus hit. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I haven't got a chance to really get into podcasts. I'll be honest with you. Um, even though I, I said I might eventually do one of my own. <laughs> so that's a bit of irony in that, I guess. Uh, like I said, I've mostly been watching anime and reading manga. That is what my life has devolved into. And occasionally playing uh, a video game here and there. Uh, from Semigog, Soul Patch, Notice Me Senpai, sure. Sure thing. Oh, here we go. Here's something. Uh, Hunter the Hunter, did you hear Wings lost his Twitch partnership? Shut the fuck up. Did he really? That guy's been walking on eggshell, or eggshells on Twitch for fucking years to keep his Twitch partnership. Did he actually really lose it? Oh, that must have sent him through the fucking roof. That must have driven him absolutely insane. So did he lose the partnership because somebody fucked with him? Like, I know that, you know, people would get into, like, team speak or team chat with him and then spam shit to get him in trouble, or they'd send messages. They'd find a way to sneak something that violated Toss, right? Uh, so what lost him his partnership, exactly? Yeah, I haven't kept up on Wing, so I don't know what the fuck he's been up to. Uh, I'm just waiting. I know there's a delay, so I'm hoping somebody in chat can tell me what exactly lost uh, Wing's his partnership. Wings is streaming on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's going to move over somewhere else if he lost the Twitch thing, but what actually caused the destruction of his Twitch channel? And was it funny? Did he throw a controller when it happened? I guess is what I'm asking. Oh, I'm not I'm not seeing anything. The chat's going a little too quick. Oh, Twitch didn't say. Yeah, tw okay, God. What a cock tease. Fucking Twitch, come on. They do, they do, they're doing that a lot now, from what I've noticed. Uh, we're going to say, we're not going to say, maybe we will, maybe we know, you know, won't. Uh, Richard Johnson, Sargon has sneed love with Applebee's employees. I heard he started his own show. Uh, something Lotus. Lotus Flower or some shit? I hear it's doing fairly well. Uh, Michael, who's it? Imagine being 40 and barely being able to pay your bills, but you pretend like you made it. Also, you have a 600 foot, <laughs> square foot apartment. I'm not sure who we're talking about. You've, you, you basically hit the nail on the head for about 100 people, Michael Luzitz. Uh Infinite Slick. Bam Bam from Chillstream Discord makes Chris Chan look like Ronald Reagan. I'm not exaggerating. She touched my boy Infinite Slick on his beaner. Uh, Misty Jim, thank you. Oh, here we go. Go on the drink. If Chris Chan's mother does defend him by saying she liked it, now incest laws need to be deliberated. Is Chris a woman? Then he can get away with it. Or does it only apply to biological females, then anchoring the trans community? I, I've actually seen this brought up because of a clause in the law in regards to incest in the state that he's in. Um, that somehow he could sneak through it uh, because he's, you know, a trans woman. But that's just going to force the courts to have to discuss, hey, you know, is it is it because Chris is, you know, it, it, do you have to be a biological female? Does this apply to trans women? I'm telling you, every aspect of this fucking trial is going to get people mad. That's the great thing about it. When option three, dimensional merge happens, <laughs> and Sonic the Hedgehog comes to testify in Chris's defense. Well. Uh, from Chris S., glad to see you still breathing. I, I try. I try. Uh, from Crichton, hope your uh, boo-boos heal up soon. Uh, I'll give it my best shot. Glad to see you streaming again. Well, hopefully 
and give you guys an hour of entertainment in the fucking darkness we're surrounded by. Uh, I'm looking for more news about Wings or Tonka. Oh, God, you could make you could make a lot of shit. Clown World from Troy Rupert, of course. It's what we're living in. You can hear the honks. Sleepy Hazard. Have two scoops on me, Jim. Thank you very much. I love my ice cream. Just like I love my president. <laughs> Doddering old Biden. A dirt mug, a pool, Perry. Jim Sterling is a beautiful woman now, you bigot. And don't forget it. To Jim Sterling. Okay, so is there a new name? What should I address uh, Zur as? Uh, what, what is, uh, I can't even, is it still Jim? Or is there a new name? Richard Johnson, your mom looks like a warm-up act for Chris Chan. <laughs> a bigger, a big digger Nick, 10 years and Winnie the Pooh will be taking selfies with Americans nukes while President Osio Cortez tells everyone to stay calm. A gold 818. Hey, Jim, I want to thank you for giving me a heads up on COVID-19. You may have saved my financial future. Also, don't you find it funny how Democrats are pushing Donald Trump vaccine? Thank you, Operation Warp Speed. Also nice to see the Nothing Burger people are now forcing everybody to get a vaccine. Uh, oh, mass aren't cultural appropriation anymore. Yeah, it is funny watching uh, the shifting sides go back and forth with one another like it's a fucking tennis match. What was that guy's name? The little Asian doctor guy. If you remember at the very beginning when I did those first coronavirus streams, he kept saying it was just the flu. And now if you go to his fucking Twitter account, he's talking about it being apocalyptic. Uh, from Sync Phase... Uh, for more fucking uh, lighters and commentary. Uh, Emony's theories, you're back, truly tumultuous times. Uh, those are the times we're living in. Uh, from Ben, you took my super chat virginity, I'll do it again. Terry knew that things would turn out this way and tried to warn us from the glow in the darks. All we can do is laugh and watch the world burn. Well, that really is the best option. Again, they can't stand it when you mock them or laugh at them. You diffuse uh, their greatest weapon, which is fear. Tonka owes child support for three kids. Hey, Jim, did you hear the new Tonka news? It was revealed by an ex-co-host of his that he's a deadbeat father. Is it three kids or four? And a woman abuser. He dodges his own children like he dodges fights. God damn, what's been going on with fucking Tonka saw? Avoid uh, destroy. I got to go to bed in 30 minutes here, but I've missed hearing your voice. Get a job. I uh, got a job while you were gone, by the way. I will listen to the rest tomorrow. Do you have any plans for more streams or videos? Any photon? Uh, not really. Not really. I'm sorry. Uh, not really planning anything at the moment. Uh, the vile delinquent. Did you hear about Adam Waffen and what the feds did? I would put up more detail, but the censorship is so bad, it's literally impossible to explain. Uh, no, I missed that too. Uh, from Shafty, Mersh from ROTC might have AIDS. Uh, hot breaking news from the Super Chats, apparently. Okay, all right. <laughs> Oh, oh, you know what? I can probably take down uh, the pinned comment now, I think. I think we're good. From Kunstkrieg Kinopix Studios. Hey, Jim. Would love to share my book with you or anyone else interested. Can email me at KafkaGuy at Gmail and we'll send you a copy. Finders called Epstein, Franklin, uh, Detroit, Seville, etc. And my two cents. Your voice is fucking magical. You sound great. Thanks, Jim. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the voice. I'm glad it still sounds somewhat manageable and the microphone I'm using isn't complete fucking shit. I miss my old mic. I liked my tinny, fucking shitty $20 Walmart mic. And it's gone. It's gone and it's dust. I know everybody has these fancy fucking mics they spent all this money on. But I love my little shitty headset. I can't even remember the brand name anymore, to be honest with you. Some obscure shit nobody would buy anymore. But I used it for a good decade. Or iterations of it for a good decade. Ah, and then it died out on me. So I'm left with this. A little fitting, I suppose. Somebody saying somebody was a Fed. I'm going to guess that relates to the super chat where they said it would be impossible to explain right now on YouTube. Have I read Steel Ball Run? Somebody in chat's asking. Uh, no, I, I don't think I've heard of Steel Ball Run, to be honest with you. Uh, people asking to be group. Yes, Logitech. Thank you, chat. Yes, it was Logitech. It was a Logitech headset. That was the fucking brand name. Shitty $20 Logitech headset. I don't even know if anybody buys Logitech equipment anymore, but I loved it. I loved my crappy, shitty little $20 Logitech headset.
am I smoking with cancer? Yes, I am. <laughs> I actually had a debate with one of the doctors about this, to be honest with you. They said, hey, you know, um, the, the lifestyle management could help uh, try to you know mitigate some of the symptoms that you're under. But, you know, my retort to that was, you can't even tell me what the fuck is going on. I've, <laughs> I've literally been to every goddamn department at Mayo, and you can't tell me what the fuck is going on. I go to I go to gastroenterology uh, with evidence of pancreatic attacks, but they say they don't think it's pancreatitis, but they're not sure what it is because they can clearly see it on CT imaging and the lipase levels are off the fucking charts. I lose my hearing and get tinnitus and the ENT can't figure out exactly what's causing that. I lose control of my eyes and muscles, but nobody can figure it out because the neurology you know neurologist is baffled. Vascular medicine can't figure out exactly why I've got fucking. Uh, dissections in uh, my uh, vertebral artery and in uh, my aorta, uh, you know, is it, um, uh, what is it, muscular dysplasia? Uh, well, no, we don't really know. We don't, you know, we don't know why your, your fucking uh, blood results are like this. We don't know why your cell counts are all fucked up. We don't know why your IgG levels are all fucked up. We can't figure it out, but we can tell you it's not cancer. It's not the cancer that's causing all this other crazy shit, but we don't know what's causing all the other crazy shit. But you should do this because it'll help. <laughs> Fuck that. You don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm smoking my cigarettes. YOLO. That's what you say. You say YOLO. <laughs> Fucking shit. Is it lupus? No. You know, I, I went to, uh, I saw a rheumatologist too, and I'm fairly certain they checked for a lot of that shit. Uh, I, you know, like obscure stuff and... Uh, endocrinologist, God, it's just a fucking wheelhouse of people running test after test, poking and fucking, uh, imaging scans and all that shit. Hey, they don't fucking know what it is. So I've got to go to genetics. They're going to have to do genetic testing to try to figure it out. It's immunology and genetics now, or as they call it in the clonomics project, uh, uh, genomics, right? I guess that makes it sound extra special. <laughs> I knew I was fucked when I read the department's information and it literally says, uh, uh, patient odyssey. Like, they're describing this. What are you using that term? You might as well just say, we don't fucking know. Uh, good luck. Good luck to you, buddy. No, it's never lupus. I think we've all learned this from fucking house. Yellow fever? That's a that's a good guess. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll crowdsource a diagnosis from chat. Uh, yellow fever? Let's put it at the top of the list. Uh, lupus is a close second, of course. Mm. The dreaded ligma. How could I have forgotten the dreaded ligma creeping around out there? Deadly, isn't it? Uh, lupus, ligma, and yellow fever. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'll be, I'll be sure to ask. I'll be sure to ask internal medicine the next time I see them. Trust the science. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> trust the science. That's not that I distrust it. It's just that they don't fucking know. Uh, Lyme's disease? Nope. Uh, yeah, yeah, if I, I'm not going to turn this into a stream. I, I'm just bringing this up because of the, the uh, comment. But it, it's too much to go over. But I've been through the ringer. Uh, they don't know what it is. It sucks, but you carry on. Uh, that's, that's I guess, the, here, let Dad Jim give you all some advice, right? Daddy Jim. Um, you know, you're going to face uh, terrible shit in your life, uh, be it health-wise or financially or just... Uh, with friends or relatives, there, there's a whole cavalcade of terrible shit that could happen to you. I mean, that's just fucking life. Uh, and you can give in to it, or you can try to roll with it. I mean, you're going to have days where you're going to scream your fucking head off and be enraged. Uh, but the point is, you know, you've got two choices. You either give up or go on. So you just got to learn to roll with it. That's, that's advice from Daddy Jim. Daddy Jim who went to get cigarettes 18 months ago and just finally showed back up. So uh, you <laughs> can Hey, technically, if I'm Daddy Jim and it took me 18 months to get back here, but still, technically, I'm a better father than Tonka, aren't I? Because <laughs> I'm addressing your concerns. I'm not running away from you. <laughs> all my children, all 16,000 of you right now. Um, somebody brought up menthol cigarettes. I thought those, aren't those gone now? Didn't they make those illegal? I never liked menthol. God, it was like smoking fucking, I, I can't even explain it. It was just awful. I'm not a methyl guy. I never was. Ah, oh, yeah. Please, somebody, be sure to tell Tonka I'm a better father than him. <laughs> Even having no children, I'm still doing a better job than Tonka. Oh. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, chat. 
<laughs> I love the idea that a dude runs a used car lot and he doesn't have a driver's license. Holy shit. <laughs> That's so sad. Oh, I'll tell you what, Tonka. Maybe Mersh can give you a ride if you can give him a good deal on a broken BMW. <laughs> if you got if you got a clanker sitting on the lot, maybe he can drive you around town. Ah, uh, menthols. Yes. No, I, I think they're gone. I think they're gone for good. They're dead and buried. I don't think menthol cigarettes are ever coming back. Uh, from the Orange Couches, got off work. Looking forward to the archive. Thanks for all the fun over the years. Wish the best for your health. Well, thank you very much. Uh, from Clay's roommate, what cigarettes am I smoking? Uh, the same ones I've always smoked, Camels. Uh, Camel Filter uh, 99s. That, or if they don't have them, I guess Mar Red 100s. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. The shit all tastes the same, let's be honest. It's kind of the same with liquor, too. You know how people have like a preference for liquor, but really, I mean, it, it's pretty much all the same shit. Uh, AAL, you said you smoke menthols. So are they still available on the market? I thought there was like some big push to get rid of anything that was flavored at all. Maybe that was with vaping. Is that what I'm confusing? Because I know vaping got like hit with like, you can't have any flavors now because that appeals to kids or some shit. So, you know, whoa, 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 whoa no, it needs to taste like, uh, I, I don't know what it would taste like, air, I guess now. <laughs> no flavors for anybody. Oh, that's right. You got me. I love clove cigarettes, chat. Oh, those cloves are the good thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it was vaping then that uh, made you get rid of all the fucking uh, flavors and tastes that you guys liked? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, from Low Ghost, the mental image of Christian just helicopter spinning his dementia stricken mother on his dick like that blow up doll is all I have left in this world. Who will play Chris in the TV dramatization? Oh, God, will we get a TV movie out of this? And you're right, that is a fucking amazing mental image. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus, can you imagine? I don't know who would play Chris uh, in the TV movie, but I hope there's a TV movie now. Not just a trial, but a TV movie. I know Netflix and Hulu are, like, desperate for programming. This is right up their alley. Now, granted, if Netflix takes a story, uh, half the characters will all end up black and transsexual, and, and they'll completely rewrite it. So I guess our best bet is Hulu doing it? I'd say Amazon, but does Amazon have any shows other than, what is it, The Boys? They don't really do original programming. Oh my god, I bet you one of those motherfuckers would actually do a Chris Chan movie. Not that I'm not appreciative. I hope they do. Uh, Jeffrey B., DSP lost his Twitch partnership a couple months ago for hateful slurs. Oh, that's hard to imagine. Like, he was... I, I'm certain kind of like the Wings thing, right? Like, if you stream on Twitch, you've got to be, like, super cautious about saying anything. That had to be something. Was it, like, a past statement he made that, like, somebody got audio of? Or did he, did he, oh, no, wait, didn't he say something that sounded like a slur? I'm vaguely remembering this. Uh, Invincible. Is that a show they have? I don't know if it's any good or not. I haven't really watched Amazon. Uh, the Boys was the comic one, wasn't it? Uh, yes, Lord of the Rings is going to be awful, right? That's Amazon that's doing that one. I mean, let's be let's be honest. It's not going to turn out well. I don't have a lot of faith in a lot of these guys. Every once in a while, one of these streaming platforms will have a show that comes on that's actually pretty good. It came out of left field. But for the most part, they butcher everything they touch. Uh, somebody said DSP dropped a hard R. Did he really? Uh, I'll have to look on YouTube if there's like a clip. Oh, fuck, would YouTube even allow a clip of that? That's probably not allowable, right? I'll have to go look on fucking Twitter, Reddit, maybe. I'm not even. Where do we go to watch shit? By the way, now that Live Leaks is gone and all the other sites are gone, where do we go to watch those kind of videos? Is there a website that exists anymore that hosts that, or is that content we'll never ever see again? There used to be like video collages, just about China. Walls falling on people, buildings exploding, like crazy shit that happens in China. Where do I go watch those now? I can't watch them on YouTube. They're not going to be on Twitch. Uh, BitChute, I guess, has to take stuff down now to comply with UK law. Live Leaks is dead and gone. It's like an entire genre of internet video is just completely evaporated, and I don't know where we go to find it anymore. You go on Telegram, really? Is it on? Are you fucking with me, or is it really allowable on Telegram? 
Daily Motion, Jesus. I think the only reason it would be allowed on Daily Motion is people forgot Daily Motion exists. <laughs> like it slips under the radar because people forgot, oh shit, that's a website. Uh, somebody said leaked reality. I haven't heard of that one. I don't know if that's a new one. From uh, Dashcam Andy, good to hear your voice again. You probably have a severe case of internet toxicity due to Andy, Tonka, Ethan, etc. Here's some shekels for smokes. Methyl cigs aren't banned yet. Biden can't lose the minority vote. Oh, is that why they've kept methyls on the uh, the shelves? Uh, zero depressive feels like you are out of cryo, dude. Uh, yeah, they they unthawed my ass for a night, just just for one evening. Uh, Viking insane, truly your return is a beam of optimism and a sea of piss and shit. Uh, well, a sea of piss and shit's a good way to describe the current environment we're all finding ourselves in. A little litter is Godspeed, chat, and good, or uh, Godspeed, Jim. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. From Umpty Doodah, Invincible Season 1 is great, renewed for three more. I read the comic, quality writing. On par with your standard Aseki, talking out your bore, or issues is boring. Uh, well, you know, I haven't watched Invincible. I mean, I'm familiar with the comic, right? I know of it. But I haven't actually watched it. Waifu Concert. Hello, Jim. I'm also dying of cancer. Please give me one last wish. Ask Ralph on Twitter who Adrian Blair is. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't think he's going to mention that name. Uh, from Thel Justine. Forget to mention with the dragon guy. He's only on YouTube spelled Elira Etheria. Talked with him for months and found his ca the cave he lived in. What the fuck are we talking about? Are you found a cave he lived in during the Bronze Age. Okay, I thought you meant there's like a YouTuber living in a cave and you found him. Elira Etheria. Okay, I'll check it out, I guess. Uh, Gleefully Grim. Uh, maybe find content on Discord. Please don't die. I don't know if Discord will allow it. Discord seems pretty harsh, too. It feels like that genre of entertainment's just done. You're not going to see any more suicide videos, murder videos, beheadings, um, Chinese building implosion videos, uh, fight videos are kind of drying up too. Like those those offshoot websites that would host that, that were dedicated to that kind of content, feel like they're gone now. That that just doesn't exist anymore. It's not coming back. We're kind of fucked. And that's depressing too. Um, like what, what do I have now? Road rage compilations on YouTube? That's about the best I can get to entertaining real life shit? There's only so many times you can listen to a Russian scream as he ver you know veers into somebody with his dash cam rolling. Uh, the dark web. Oh, the eponymous dark web. <laughs> I you know like uh, I load up Tor and then I wait four hours for one video to be playable. I I don't know. Uh, World Star. I mean, World Star used to have like fight compilations, but I mean that's that's about it. I don't think they show like the the videos that Live Leaks used to host. Uh, GIF, yeah. I mean, the GIF board, sure, but like you're gonna get one fucking thread about you know like one wrecked thread out of uh, 482 BBC threads, right? So it's a sea of dicks to wade through to find a beheading. <laughs> that's your experience. If I had to describe the GIF board on 4chan, a sea of cocks you've got to wade through to find one beheading. Uh, from Seal Club, hey Jim, glad you're back. Have you seen the live-action Cowboy Bebop? They basically admit they haven't seen the source material. It's bad. Is Minnesota going red anytime soon, or should I leave? Uh, well, it depends on the region. Anything around the Twin Cities is pretty much designated blue. I don't know if it's going to go red or not. Let's see how badly Biden fucks shit up. From Polyfrog64, PPP is seething about your return. Did you hear about Ralph knocking up the Jewish girl creating a demon baby? <laughs> Do you watch VTubers? Telegram and Gab also host those videos. Okay, well, I guess I can check out Telegram. And, uh, you know, I didn't think of checking Gab out, but maybe Gab will let them kind of slide by. So people are serious, though, about Telegram actually allowing that shit. <laughs> and yes, I did hear Ralph has uh, another kid on the way. The guys out there are just seeding people left and right. From Annette Bash. First and only East Level ever pay. Good to hear your voice. Even for an hour. Godspeed. Been watching you for eight years. Uh, well, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you like the videos. Uh, Troy Rupert, we could set up a Plex server. I just want somewhere we can go to watch that shit. It feels, it sucks, right? I mean, I know Live Leaks kind of turned to shit near the tail end. I, and maybe that was their own choosing, or maybe that's something they were forced into do, you know, to keep their servers running or to keep the ad revenue coming in. 
I, I know that it started to become a big hassle when YouTubers would go there and promote their videos and live leaks would like front page it and everybody fucking hated it because it wasn't the shit they were showing up to watch. But still, even with all that, it was like one of the last places you could go to watch that kind of shit. And now with that gone, man, it's just, ah, you can feel the walls caving in. The kind of content, entertainment, and uh, uh, things you might watch just aren't available anymore. Uh, it's very, very dark, I guess. It's depressing to think about it that way, but that's kind of what it is. Uh, from Nexi, cobalt poisoning causes deafness, tinnitus, vision, heart problems, and cancer. Real common cause if you have TI implants made in the last 20 years since metal industry has OTT fraud out of China. Uh, well, I don't have any implants, uh, but I don't know if they've ever actually checked cobalt poisoning. Um, yep, I, I don't know if you're fucking with me or not, but I'll bring it up. Uh, from Snip, still watching people excavate their basement with toys or like the guy with the underwater hamsters. I loved Hampshire. That was one of the, the just whole, you know, it's like a wholesome fucking thing, right? This guy's going to build this underwater enclosure. He's got pet hamsters. You know, I know some of them died on him. That was very depressing. He got some more. Uh, they didn't die because of the, the underwater enclosures. They just died, I think, due to natural causes or old age. Um, but I, yeah, I liked that. It's very wholesome. How can you not like Hampshire? It's just a very basic concept. Uh, of an underwater hamster utopia. And then like, he was doing like Skylab for a while where he's going to make like a floating city. It's very entertaining. As for the excavator guy, I saw some more of his videos, but I don't think he really has done anything much past that point. Uh, what's my favorite band or musician? Do you like Kill Switch and Gage? I don't know. I listen to a fucking blend of music, man. I, I don't have a favorite band or musician. I just like uh, background noise. I'll pretty much let it play. Uh, almost any genre, really. Uh, what happened to Ross Cole Agency? I have no idea. I, I don't know. I don't know. People are saying he's back. I don't know if he's really back or not. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, well, we've been going for about two hours here. <sighs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't streamed in a long time. Not that I did the longest streams, but, you know, it's been a while. Uh, will I do more in the future? I know some people asked. I, I, I can't guarantee you or promise you anything, to be honest with you. Uh, it's kind of just, I'm stuck in like a perpetual energy drain, to be honest with you. Uh, but watching the Biden stuff, the clusterfuck of Afghanistan, uh, it kind of got me hyped. The Christian thing definitely got me hyped. Uh, finding out Tonka is like <laughs> on the run at Burger King, uh, trying to hold on to his driver's license because he needs to feed his four kids. That's funny to me. God, I gotta go. I gotta go look at a talk of shit, man. Uh, I was unaware of the DSP uh, Twitch thing, or I probably did hear it, but I just forgot about it. The wings thing was new to me. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting shit coming up. I, I maybe I'll do a stream in the future. I don't know. Uh, but you know, I've, I've got my own shit to sort out. It's been a year of dealing with this hell shit, and I'm trying my best to to deal with it. But it's fucking draining, and you just run out of energy, and you just don't really care about much. I'll be honest with you. So we'll see going forward what I do. Uh, thank you for coming out to watch. I know this was a, a, a you know ice cream social extravaganza, and I forgot to bring the fucking ice cream. Uh, but you know, I guess it was nice to touch base. Uh, I believe it or not, I'm still alive. Wow, shocker! Still out there. Still out there. <laughs> oh. uh, Gab is something. Gab that just shot through. Uh, Kraut is back. I, th I thought Kraut was doing videos for like the last two years. He's doing like those uh, country ball videos. From what I understand, they're pretty popular. He's getting like half a million views on those things. Oh, yeah, the gap thing's going by too quick. I'm sure people are telling me it's a honeypot or there's some issue with it, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, but anyway, I, I think we'll cap it off here. Thanks for coming out to watch. Appreciate the super chats. Uh, oh, yeah, let me, uh, oh, hold on. I, I got to do the grifting right here. Where is it? Uh, buy, don't forget to buy those hats. Hats and t-shirts. Oh, my God. And don't forget to buy sweaters. All, all the sweaters you could buy. Look at the flashing lights. Oh, you want to buy a sweater from me? Oh, Daddy Jim's precious sweaters. <laughs> Available on Taste Spray. Uh, but with that, uh, I'll bid you adieu for the evening. Uh, maybe there'll be a, a, a stream in the future. Who knows? Maybe a podcast. Who knows? Uh, best of luck. The world's crazy. 
try to get a laugh out of it. It's the best way to cope. It's the best way to cope with the dysfunction all around us. Uh, enjoy the shit show with Biden and the Afghanistan thing. Who knows where that's going to go. But remember, you have that Chris Chan trial to look forward to. And God, please let it happen that Barbara Chandler gets on <laughs> gets on the, uh, the stand to testify and tell us how good Chris ate that pussy. Have a good evening, Chet. And I'll talk to you later.